Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to another Blood Splattered Vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And we just got done watching Cult of Chucky, the latest entry in the Child's Play series, which, oh god, are they at seven now? Seven movies? Uh, let's see. Child's Play, Child's Play 2, Child's Play 3, Bride, Bride Seed, Seed, Curse, Curse. Yes, yeah, yeah, seven. Seven movies. Seven goddamn, who knew? I know. This franchise about this killer doll. Would last this long. <laughs> I know, right? Like, well, I, I, I did, because in the 80s, you always did that. That's true. Because it hit the first time, you got to make 10 more. But here's the amazing part about it, is that the Child's Play series, despite having at least two dips for me personally, is overall a very consistent series. Overall, comparatively. It is, it is <laughs> the no most Hellraiser. consistent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well it, here's the thing. Hellraiser has two great entries oh, yeah. yeah amazing entries. yeah child's play has one great entry which is the first one and then all the others are either really stupid fun yes or kind of bad yes yes but not so but bad that they're unwatchable yeah none of them suck they're not like a hellraiser sequel that yeah. like went straight to video and you're just like oh oh yes yeah. so the I so many of those hellraiser it. sequels just suck. but i could i could finish child's play 3 even yeah. though it's not that great. <laughs> no, no, it's not that good. Uh, that's the one at the uh, military, military academy. Academy, yeah. yeah, yeah. When he sent... and ironically, here's the funny part about Child's Play: it now has the most consistent continuity. Yeah, weirdly, of all of them. Weirdly, despite the fact the previous movie made that weird. Yeah, this movie it did. actually. The weird part is this movie takes all the continuity issues I had with Curse of Chucky and makes them all make sense. Now, mind you, I hate that it's now taking sequels to fix continuity errors from previous movies. I wish people would just make better movies, period. Yeah, yeah, you just kind of want them to just make the movie consistent with itself. Well, and here's the thing. I think yeah. part of it's intentional. I think the idea is we wanted to make a movie and have it lead into a second movie and make a whole franchise, but I really prefer movies to be nice and contained. Yeah. Like, like the, the, a good example of the kind of cliffhangers I like is I like Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man yes. 2 has a complete story. Everything with Doc Ock is nicely resolved and everything that's going on with Peter Parker's life is resolved with this one cliffhanger based on a subplot. Yeah. It's not the main plot that's left a cliffhanger. No. You know? Now, granted, Star Wars did do that with the with the second movie, Empire Strikes yeah, Back. Yeah, with Empire Strikes Back. But that's... I don't know how to say it other than I feel that's more acceptable in a second movie than a first. Uh, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Especially if it's like you've established the movie and now you're going to do the franchise. Now, this is a weird case where we're in the middle of a franchise at this point. Yeah. And we're doing because, this. Yeah, because we, we can see the first three as the first continuity yeah. or not even the first continuity but the first era of chucky movies yeah. is the first three the, the original andy era where he's chasing andy as a kid yeah um, he chases him at the beginning of the movie in the first movie uh, and then in the second movie he chases him to his foster parents yeah and his school and then in the third movie he chases him all the way to military academy yeah um, and then you have bride and seed yes. which is very much the tiffany era yes that you is know, the, the Jennifer Tilly era. Yes. Yeah. That, that is that is the Chucky Chucky has domestic era, issues era. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're entering into this weird other phase that I can only refer to as Brad Dourif's daughter's era. Yeah. Yeah. The Fiona. The yeah, Fiona. Fiona Dourif. Yeah. Um, um, or also known as Nico in in the movies. Um, her era, which is, oh my God, I didn't think. After Seed, you could get weirder than this, but this movie is weird as fuck. Like, without getting into spoilers, yeah. this, this rivals Seed as the weirdest entry of the franchise. Yeah, it's not as campy. It's not as no. intentionally campy as Seed. Well, basically, what, what this movie felt like is it took, it took, like, the serious tone and the moody tone from Curse of Chucky that a lot of people really liked, but I kind of felt like it was missing the fun of the original, of the original series. Yeah. Um, but it added that fun back in. It did. So it had that super serious tone, but with the humor back. Yeah, Chucky feels like Chucky again. Yes. He's the cackling maniac that I always feel like Chucky needs to be, but Curse kind of toned him down because they wanted him to be like the first movie again, where he's basically quiet most of the time. Yeah, because because in this one, like, the minute he actually speaks, that woman's like, yeah. don't be afraid. And he's just like, what? <laughs> The fuck you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> she's like, I, I understand you. And he's just like, all right, let me break look. this down for you, lady. <laughs> I am a sentient doll standing in front of you with a very sharp object. 
<laughs> I've got someone else to kill now, but I'm going to be right back. And then she keeps going. He's like, all right, bitch, that's it. That was the scene where I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to like Colt more than Curse. Because yes. that scene was Chucky being Chucky. And that's yeah. what I like. I like that Chucky. You know, that's the Chucky. Like, the, you could argue that Seed and Bride went a little too far with that Chucky. I disagree. I would disagree as well. But yeah. this movie is the perfect balance of that Chucky and the the Curse of Chucky mood and tone. Um, and uh, the thing I did like about Curse of Chucky was Nico, uh, Fiona's yeah. character. And she is even better in this one, in my opinion. Yeah, Like, yeah. The, the places they take her in this movie is insane. Like, yeah. quite literally, because it's an insane asylum. Yeah. The, <laughs> other, the other thing that's really, really interesting is, all right, so if you've seen Curse of Chucky, it has this really weird cliffhanger ending. Yeah. That dovetails into this movie yeah yeah it, it goes straight into this movie so now i understand what they're doing they're they're basically yeah. doing like like episodes of a series as opposed to like complete movies now i don't like that very much i had that problem with force awakens when yeah. force awakens didn't make itself a complete movie and instead made it this like open-ended thing um but that being said if they keep up the consistent quality and they keep on making the movies better and better like they did with this one then I can live with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, I feel a little better about Curse of Chucky having seen Colt of Chucky, though I still don't like that, that that it took Colt of Chucky for me to like Curse of Chucky. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say Curse of Chucky was a dip. Because, like, and, and, and this is, I don't want to spoil things, but both the movies have the same problem where they don't really end. They Correct. Kind, they kind yeah. of dovetail into what is obviously going to be the next movie. And I kind of miss the first era of movies where each movie kind of had its own contained thing. You had a you had a beginning, a middle, and an epic climax confrontation with Chucky. Yeah. That and that 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 might lead into a teaser for the next one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what we what we got with like curse well we have a curse and cult. You have flat out cliffhangers. Yeah. They're flat out cliffhangers. <laughs> like which is fine because they resolve in cult they resolve enough of the plot to let you know what's going on. Yeah. So you now know what's going on going into whatever movie they're going to go ne do yes. next, as opposed to with Curse, where you're like, the fuck is happening? <laughs> that, 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 that last act of Curse, like, I'm just like, damn, guys. Like, I probably would have liked this movie a little better if that wasn't so weird and, yeah. like, all over the place. You're just like, where... Okay, so you're going to... Curse ended with him standing over uh, the niece and going to put his soul in her, and then there's credits... And then after the credits, Chucky pops up at Andy's. And you're like, okay, what the fuck happened in between these two yeah, things? Yes. Now, this movie explains all that. Yes, it does. This movie explains all that in a very satisfactory way, but I despise that it took this movie to answer that question. Yeah. Like, it, like if you go back, how to put it, if you go back and watch Curse, and I know you can't do this, mm -hmm. but you should be able to piece together what is going to happen in Cult from everything that's in Curse. Yeah. Like, those details, but the, I, you know those details are absent. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 they are. Um, the, now, that being said, I fucking love Cult. Oh, no, Cult of Chucky is amazing. I fucking that love Cult. Was, was Cult movie. of Chucky is one of my favorite entries in the franchise next mm -hmm. to Two and Seed. Um, because I just had such a blast watching this whole thing. I wish it had an ending. Yeah. I, I wish it had a, uh, here's the thing. You can still leave that cliffhanger ending at the end, but what I needed was a bigger confrontation between the lead and Chucky leading into that. Yeah, that exactly. Ending. Exactly. You know, because as it stands, it felt like it was building up to a climax. That's obviously going to be the next movie yeah. as opposed to an actual climax. Yeah. It felt like it needed a, a climax of its own before getting into. Well, the Cause like, one. here's the thing about empire strikes back. Yes. It has that cliffhanger ending. Yes. Luke loses yada, 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 but you get that really intense scene between him and Darth Vader. Luke, I am your father. Yes. Yeah. And while this movie has a scene kind of like that, it doesn't, feel like it's the climax Correct. it doesn't feel like the climax so when you get to the actual like oh wait the movie's already ending already oh shit i that was the climax oh i thought that was leading into the third act like yeah I, yeah this, <laughs> is, this movie th this this area of chucky is really weird because each movie feels like the first act of a bigger movie well yeah basically what it feels like right now is that okay the first movie the Curse of Chucky felt like Act 1. Yeah. This is Act 2, and maybe we'll get Act 3. Or maybe it's the first half of Act 2. I don't know. Yeah, well, whatever they get But it get definitely next. doesn't feel like a complete story yet. No. No, because every all the players, all the major players are still active by the yeah. end of this movie. 
That being um, said, I'm intensely interested in where it's going. Because oh, yeah, yeah. The way, the way this movie ends is like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, it reminds me, the obvious, uh, now that we've seen Curse, the obvious structure that they're going for reminds me a lot of uh, Todd Farmer's intention for the Jason movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, like, where it turns into a weird time travel and then Jason has to kill Jason. I would not be surprised if it ends up adding that kind of shit in the next one, because this movie goes crazy. Oh, God, like, like, yeah. We'll get to the spoilers soon, and we'll start getting into the craziness of this movie, but trust me, this movie's fucking insane. Look, we gotta look, we gotta work through the, our, our conflicted feelings about Curse of Chucky, okay, yes. people? And, and to a certain extent, a little conflicted about Cult, even though I loved it. Because, yeah. Because it's one of those things where I absolutely enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite entries, but like, god damn, I wish it was more complete. Uh, in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, quick capsule, thumbs up. Yeah, hell, yeah. really liked thumbs it. Up. Really thumbs good. Up. If you are a fan of if you're a fan of Curse, you'll probably like Cult. If you're a fan of the original franchise, you'll probably like Cult. That is that is the best thing you could ask yeah, for. Yeah, right yeah, you couldn't you couldn't ask for more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, with all that said, I guess we'll go into the spoilers. Alrighty then. So uh, if you were wondering what the hell happened between uh, the ending of of Curse and the after the credits of Curse. Well, it turns out there are multiple Chuckies running around. Yep. So the Chucky that was standing over Alice, I, Alice? Was it Alice? I, I believe oh, her name's I Alice. I believe her name's Alice, yeah. Alice from Curse, who was standing over Alice, is not the same Chucky that arrives at Andy's. Confusing, I know, but it turns out over the course of this movie, you find out that Charles Lee Ray figured out a new voodoo curse that he found on the internet that allows yeah. him to essentially spread his soul out into different dolls. Yep. Actually, it says he can spread his doll out into more than just dolls. Yes. <laughs> he can possess people. So over the course of this movie, there is multiple Chuckies running around. Like, I think we get a total of four Chucky dolls, including the one that Andy has. Yeah, yeah. Four you, Chucky dolls, including the one Andy has. Um, which, which the one Andy has is just a head. But then there is the 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 short haired Chucky. There yeah. is the Chucky with the one arm. Yeah. And then there is the uh, initial Chucky that arrives. <laughs> who, who? Yeah. They did a really good job of making all the different Chuckies look distinct. Yes. So you never lost. They always made sure something happens. Like oh, like this Chucky gets his hand burnt, so he's got this weird hand thing. Yeah. This other Chucky is buried because it's in a mental asylum, and this one girl attaches her emotions to the doll and assumes it's her son yeah like her dead because kid. she she yeah. apparently is in the mental asylum because she killed her kid and so she starts treating the doll like it's her kids like oh little boy oh, oh, oh. and there's a point where she actually has the doll suck her nipple yeah <laughs> she nurses chucky and this comes back when the two when the, the chuckies get together and have like a little meeting about what they're gonna do next and it's they're like, like i get to kill andy no i do hey i don't want to hear it you got titty today you know <laughs> um oh my god that fucking conversation's amazing <laughs> That, that, that's the best scene. One of the best scenes in the whole movie is the the Chucky's arguing. Oh, I'm god. like, oh my god! And that that was actually part of the reason where I'm just like, wait, the movie's gonna the movie ends like ten minutes after that, and I'm sitting there going like, wait, that felt like that was leading into the finale, not the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It 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 is. It does have that weirdness of going. This doesn't really have a climax. No, no. It, but it, it has. Big Wait, moment. It, 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 it has a climax, but it, it doesn't feel like it's the climax until the movie's over and you realize it was the climax. Yeah. That's basically what you have in this movie. Yeah. Um, because, like, to me, structurally, it felt like it was the thing that's going to lead into the third act. You know? Yes. Now that all the Chuckies are revealed, okay, now Fiona is going to have to battle the three Chuckies until what ends up happening, which is one of the Chuckies takes over her. Yeah. You know? And, but instead, you have the three Chuckies, they t one of them takes over her, and then there's a brief confrontation with Andy, and then the movie ends. That's... Yeah. <laughs> now, there is, like... Now, there is this weirdness. Yeah. W which is a question that probably has to be answered in the third movie. Yeah. Can any Chucky split his soul or can only the original one do it? That is a very good question because they don't quite clarify that. Yeah. Because we only see the one Chucky do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We only see the one the Chucky do it. The one that takes over it. Fiona. Yeah. And, to, and they don't try to take over Andy, which was the 
traditional plot no. of the first three. And they do establish it's not just Chucky who can do this because when they show Tiffany later, she's got a doll that laughs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tiffany, can, Tiffany can do it too. For, for a while over the course of this movie when they were establishing that there's multiple Chuckies, I was assuming that maybe Tiffany was also Chucky. Yeah. That's actually a question I want answered. What happened between Seed and these movies that made them team up together again? Yeah. Because at the end of Seed, Tiffany's resolved her life with Glenn and Glenda and Chucky arrives to kill them all. So... Why is Tiffany working with Chucky again? Where's Glenn and Glenda? Come on, Don Mancini. I want a fucking hand. I want to Yeah, yeah. We, we want to see Glenn and Glenda You are again. not allowed to erase Seed of Chucky from the timeline, as far as I'm concerned. No. Well, it's <laughs> especially considering that it seems like everything's in continuity. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in Curse, it's like the, the one of the surprise twists of Curse is that it's not a reboot. It's a sequel. Yeah. And that's when his face when his face cracks and you reveal that underneath that new porcelain mask is the old Chucky face with all the stitches stitches and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And that's the one that ends up at Andy's place. Yes. Somehow. Yes. <laughs> somehow it is mailed to Andy. And I don't know how that happens. Maybe Tiffany Oh yeah, I think at the end Tiffany gets the corpse and mails it or something like that something like, something that. like that yeah i do recall there's a cameo of tiffany and curse where she gets the doll i think but it was it was it was another answer where i was just like why is tiffany working with chucky again i thought they were mortal enemies again like, yeah 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 they just on again off again relationship. It, where's glenn and glenda i want to know where glenn and glenda mm -hmm. is uh, as a fan of glenn and glenda and i don't give a shit if you don't like cedar chucky i love cedar chucky i want glenn and glenda in the next movie <laughs> i i do too you know, yeah, I do too. I, I especially know. want to see Glenn and Glenda with this current like weird tone. Well, like, yeah, because it's it's, it's the last piece. It's the last piece. It's like the film series. If 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 they, if the next movie is as good as Cult of Chucky, I'm like, no, this series is now kind of perfect. Absolutely. You know, um, oh, something we haven't talked about with this movie is I actually really like all the side characters in this movie. Yeah, they're really like good. like like this takes place with Fiona. She's gone to the mental asylum because. She's been basic. All the murders from Curse of Chucky has been pinned on her. Uh, kind of like what happened to, I think, Andy's mom after yeah. the first one. Um, but they never really showed what happened to her. But that's the assumption, I think, in two, if I recall correctly. Yeah, yeah. She's put away. Yeah. Or is she killed? I can't remember. It's been a while. But the point is, she's been, all the murders have been pinned on her. She's gone to this mental asylum and she's transferred to a minimum security one as opposed to a maximum security one. And while there, she's introduced to all these characters. Uh, there's one with a multiple personality disorder who she doesn't realize that has one at first and actually hits it off with and ends up fucking in a great scene. Um, there's uh, this girl with anger issues who apparently burnt down her house. Uh, there's this other girl who killed her son and attaches herself to the Chucky doll yeah. that they bring in for Fiona's uh, therapy. Um, and uh, there's this one night nurse. Actually, there's two night nurses. There is uh, the blonde female one, and then there's the like Puerto Rican dude. Yeah. Um, and the Puerto Rican dude's awesome. I love that. Oh guy. yeah. He's I'm actually not sure if he was Puerto Rican. He, I, I just, he, he, he Latin American. Latin, something. He seemed like he was Latin American yeah. something to me. But um, uh, that guy was great. And, and Fiona hits it off with him really well. Um, and I ended up like actually caring and liking each of the characters. This is one of those movies where I'm sitting there and every time a character is about to die, I kind of don't want them to die yet. Yeah. You know, with maybe the exception of that one girl who was giving Fiona all the hard time throughout the movie, but. Or the doctor. But even still, like, like that happens right after she realizes that, oh shit, I was wrong. And yeah. And, and, and the way her death happens is where, when she's paralyzed <laughs> and Chucky, like, That's so cruel. shatters all this glass on top of her like and she's got that single tear as he does it like she can't move like oh man that got me that yeah. was that was rough that was brutal one of the things i thought was really interesting about cult is i i'm gonna say something it's gonna sound like i'm talking down about the movie but yeah. i'm actually not there was something a little full moony about this yeah well, I think it's it, adding the multiple Chuckies. Yeah. Kind of gives it that feel, feel. And because they're no longer theatrical big budget releases, they're kind of these low budget releases. They're kind That's of relying true. a lot more on mood than they had to before. Yeah, yeah. Cause it, this, this one has, is a very contained now, location. That all said, Curse of Chucky and Cult of Chucky are the most visually stunning Chucky movies yeah. ever made. Yeah. They're just very, <laughs> they're just very limited in scope. Yeah. They're they... limited in scope, but visually they look great. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the first one was just one house. And yeah. This one, it's an it's asylum. Just, just the asylum. And it's very obvious. You only have like a corridor and like a couple rooms mm -hmm. to work with. 
Yeah, like, there there are some other shots in other locations, but they're real brief. Well, yeah, yeah, a lot of those are outdoors, with the exception of Andy's Place. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, Andy's Place, the restaurant that the movie starts in. Which seems like it was the most expensive location. Probably it was, <laughs> you know? Like, everything else, they probably got dirt cheap, but, like, that restaurant scene probably, like, yeah. that was probably a whole deal. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Um, I also, I also also love that the, that the, that the current main character of this franchise is paralyzed. And what I also loved, a little detail I noticed, is that when Chucky took her over, she could walk. Yes. And I was like, how does that work? <laughs> well, because he animates things. Yes, yes. If he can make a thing that don't move walk, he yes. can probably make a... Well, yes. And it was a really, walk. it was an awesome detail. It was an awesome detail. It was a fucking great detail. Yeah, and they, it. they pulled it off really well because you bought it immediately. You didn't even question it. You know, um, um, there's some great Chucky moments in this. Like, I think a lot more than there was in Curse. Like, I love that moment because there's a psychiatrist who's treating them all who is a terrible psychiatrist. He's 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 he's, he's the stereotypical, like, I'm fucking my patient's <laughs> psychiatrist guy. Yeah. But except he's, he's presented as more... As if he does care, yeah. <laughs> but he but he doesn't. Yeah, how to put it? Like he's the pussy liberal version of the evil psychiatrist yeah. that would have existed in. That's in a good way to put it. Eras. That's a good way yeah. to put it. Um, and there's a great moment when he is hypnotizing uh, Fiona Dorf's uh, Nico and uh, about to essentially fuck her, and like Chucky comes in and smashes a bottle over his head. It's just like. Man, what is with this guy? Yeah. He's diabolical. I don't know whether to kill him or take notes. Yes. I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, I fucking love you, Chucky. One of, one of the things I, I liked about this is when Chucky takes Fiona over, there's this kind of cool moment where all of a sudden you're like, yeah, she does look like her dad, doesn't she? Oh, God, she? and she has a blast playing Chucky. Oh, my God, And plus yeah. we get this great moment where she and Tiffany hook up together, and you're just like, oh, man, we're going to get... Yeah, so it's a lesbian relationship, <laughs> yeah. kind of? Well, that's actually one thing I've loved since Don Mancini has started doing these straight-to-video movies, starting with Curse. There is a lot of LGBT representation in these movies now. Yeah. Um. Uh. The, the Puerto Rican... And a nurse establishes that he has a boyfriend. Yeah, um, his and, husband. Yeah, has yeah. a husband. Husband. Curse of Chucky, there is a, I believe, a lesbian couple in that movie. What? No, was it a lesbian or a gay couple? God damn it. I have to rewatch Curse. But I remember in that movie, there there was a uh, a weird situation where someone was having an affair on their significant other with yeah. someone of the same sex. Yeah. What was, the movie, what was the movie that he did before Curse of Chucky? Seed of Chucky? Seed of Chucky. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don Mancini was the first one. The, the, he's written all the Chucky movies. The first one he directed was Seed. Oh. Oh, so he was on... Wait, I thought the first one was written by Tom Holland. Tom Holland uh, adapted a script that Don Mancini wrote. Oh, okay. All right. There you go. Never mind. Shows how much he knows about the Chucky franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Chucky franchise was is not the... Not... I don't know that. Like, I know, like, Hellraiser and <laughs> shit like that. No, Don Mancini's the man behind all the Chucky movies. Got it. Okay, so he's been so he directed the last four of them. Yeah, well, uh, three, three, because he didn't oh. direct Bride. That was Ronnie Yu. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Ronnie Yu who directed Freddy vs. Jason. Yes. Okay. Yes, and Warriors of Virtue and uh, Fearless. <laughs> Fearless with Jet Li. <laughs> I'm sorry, you Warriors of Virtue. Hey, man, shit happens, dude. But kangaroo people yep. in Hong Kong, you've lost me. <laughs> kangaroo martial arts Hong Kong Ninja Turtles is what Warriors of Virtue is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but like, I, the funny thing is, is the only part I question is the kangaroo part. The thing is, is that 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 movie that, that movie would be way better if it wasn't shot the way it is, because it's like action sequences are all this weird. There was this period of time in kung fu movies, especially Chinese, uh, mainly Chinese kung fu movies, where they would do this weird fade effect when fight scenes were happening. Yeah, yeah, they they would do like um, because it was because like uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden, Hidden Dragon was a huge yeah. hit. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Warriors of Virtue, every fight scene has that, and you're like, man, I probably would have been more into this movie as, in a, as a kid if the fight scenes were more like Ninja Turtles. Like, oh yeah, they were actually yeah. just fight scenes. Those those nineties Ninja Turtles movies. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, maybe not the third one, but well, not you know? the third one. The third one's <laughs> just bad. The third one's just bad. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, that first one is awesome, and the second one is second least... one's stupid. The second one, yeah, but it's... there's. It, 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 it's got a lot of cheese value to it, but the first one's legit good. Yeah, well, how, how to put it? 
I really loved the first one. I didn't like the second one, but my little brother and sister liked the second one. Yeah, I was yeah. like, you know what? Fair mm-hmm. enough. Like, I'm I'm past this point. But if you're a kid and you saw Turtles 2, no problem. I wouldn't say Turtles that. 3, on the other hand, what the fuck? Turtles in Time or something like that? It was really well, it wasn't bad. even Turtles in Time. It was just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Oh, yeah. But they go back in time. That's right. And there was a v- arcade machine called Turtles in Time that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in Time. That's so everyone true. assumed that that was the title of the third movie. But and then there was the fourth one, TMNT, which was animated. Yes. But it was technically a sequel to those first three. Yeah, <laughs> that was so fucking weird. <laughs> like, for some reason, the, um, yeah, that, that animated one, I always found myself going, why aren't we just fighting Shredder again? I don't know. That Could one, we that just, was weird. let's just do It wasn't Ninja terrible. Turtle. No, it, it was better than three. Thing. Yeah, well, that's not, yeah, such a high bar there. But it did feel weird, because you're just like, okay, now we got an animated sequel, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nothing nothing quite... We're talking about Ninja Turtles now. Yeah, yeah, we should probably get back to what we were actually discussing. <laughs> it's shot really well. It's well acted all around. It's uh, one of the more artsy in terms of its... In terms it's, of the way it's yeah, animated Yeah, surprisingly. Um, despite being really campy and weird... Um, and I kind of like it. I kind of like that weird juxtaposition. Um, uh, I wish I had an ending. Um, I can live with the next movie continuing the story. Uh, as long as there is a next movie. As long as there is a next movie. If there isn't, I'll be pissed. I'll be pissed if there's not the, next This movie, movie will go yeah. down many notches if there's not a next movie. And that's part of my problem with making these movies that aren't really contained and lead into the next one. Is that if in the event of you not making the next one, now the original movie's fucked. Well, the funny thing <laughs> is, I feel, still feel like you could have had a great climax and still had the cliffhanger. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, I just, just, just up the battle between Chucky and her at the end. Yeah. You know, like, have it be like when he first gets there, she actually has to fight him. Yeah. And get past him, but loses, you know? Yeah, then we can just... Then if it ends there, that's at least a complete story. Exactly. You know? Exactly. It's really weird because, like, the plot threads themselves aren't hung in an unnatural way. Most of the plot threads within the movie are resolved. Yeah, but the emotional arc at the end is a little weird. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's not like the actual tangible plot. It's like it doesn't feel like it reaches its emotional end. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because we never have that big that big bang up no. at the end, like, which which Star Wars, for example, Empire Strikes Back has. It does. It has yeah. that emotional end. It has that moment of like, I am your father. You know. Yeah, yeah. Even 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 um, Child's Play three has that big explosion in military base. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Child's Play three has a it has a climax. So yeah, yeah, it has a climax. <laughs> there are a lot of other things it doesn't have, but it sense. has climax. It doesn't have a lot of sense. It's. <laughs> It's it's definitely the why I, is this happening? I wasn't aware paintball guns could shoot real bullets. That's that's new to me. <laughs> that's uh hey, it's military school. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, uh I could go plot point by plot point, but what's the point? I feel like you guys should check out Colt of Chucky if you're a child's play fan. If you don't like child's play, you ain't gonna like Colt. Um, if you really you like, suck. if you really like Curse, and you would like to see where that was going, then definitely see Colts. Oh yeah, I think I, I know think... there's a lot of people that like Curse that weren't Child's Play fans. I think that's another reason I kind of resent the movie. What? Uh, what? I kind of resent Curse a little bit because it is the Child's Play movie that people that don't like Child's Play like. Why? <laughs> I guess you know, whatever. No accounting because for it's taste. got the Baba Duke slash uh, Insidious like tone. Oh, because well, it, it's filmed yeah. like the modern spooky ghost story, but with Chucky. So it's got that's all what the I didn't trappings. like about it. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I like Child's Play to be Child's Play, and I felt like this movie did a better balance of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There has to be a little bit more of that. Nah, 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 nah. Especially this movie feeling more like a really well done full moon movie works better. Oh, it did it worked way better. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And I will include an Amazon affiliate link to Cult of Chucky in the description below if you would like to see it, but it's also available on Netflix. Um, But it's the rated version on Netflix, whereas I watched the unrated version. Because yeah, because you got that cool collection. I got that cool collection, yeah. which I will link at the end of this video. So, yeah, there we go. And with all that said, my fellow Gorehounds, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.